Disclaimers. The vast majority of the main theory in this video comes from Van Passer of the Carnarian Law Server. I just added a little bit here and there and wrote the conclusion. The simulated universe is a big part of it. While it is simulated, the only times the scientists refute what we see is when the trailblazer specifically messes up to do things that are impossible, such as trying to meet Nanook during the swarm disaster. Since the simulation produces results that match known facts, such as confirming the theory of Paul Kakamon killing Emperor Rupert, I think we can more or less take what appears within at face value. Finally, I'll be using Fooley's comments from the SU, but they're weird, so more on that later. The gist of the theory is Akavili and Nanook are connected, maybe even related. The recent Cosmodicy event solidified this idea even further by giving us a general timeline of the events surrounding Akavili's fall. First, let's start with the visual similarities between the eons. Nanook takes the form of a human male with dark skin. They have a bleeding wound on their chest and unraveling limbs. We don't have official art of Akavili yet, but it's possible we've seen them in the swarm disaster, specifically in the architects and also fortification events. In these, we follow a traveller who encounters a giant architect three times. On the third, the giant addresses them as the trailblaze specifically, not a trailblazer or nameless. The illustration accompanying this little story depicts the traveller in question with an astral express badge, a cloak and bandages on their arms. You could argue this is just the lighting talking, but I think their skin looks dark too. If this really is Akavili, you could also say they're meant to resemble Kalos instead. Kalos looks similar to Nanook anyway. Their clothes have the same mix of black, gold and grey, Nanook's just having purple accents and Kalos is having blue and red instead. The Trailblazer's body was designed to store a style on so there's a connection there either way. Next, here's what Fooley has to say about the Eons when he meet them in the simulated universe in the final closed beta before Starrell launched. The second paragraph is key. As you can see, each sentence refers to a different Eon, so the dark-skinned man can't be Nanook because they're the golden scar, nor can it be a Aha, because they're the baby, referencing the masked full story of how Aha became an Eon. Of the Eons we know of, Archivili is the only other one who took human form to mingle with mortals, so it has to be them. Here's how this exchange looks in the current version of Star Rail. Both start the same way, mentioning a warped version of Kafka before switching to discussing the Eons, only this time they only describe what appears to be Nanook's birth and a dark-skinned person in a robe. It's left ambiguous whether they're the same entity or not. And to finish this section, Archivili is described as wearing a robe when they appear at the end of the swarm disaster as well. So, what do we know about Akivili? They were venti after playing too much Zelda Spirit Tracks. They set up the Astral Express fleet and the Star Rails they run on, and as said before, they love to mingle with mortals and share stories. While they were constrained by their paths like other eons, because trailblazing is about experiencing new things by definition and didn't seem to affect them as much as their peers, and just like venti, they had a darker side, being one of the eons who took part in Tezron's murder at the aforementioned end of the swarm disaster. From her to slogs, we also know Akivili really visited Adlevan sometime after the Emperor's War explored in Golden Gears at a time when it was fighting off remnants of the swarm. Note that the Emperor's War happened after the swarm disaster, and remember Archivili was flexible in their behaviour and fully mentioned an eon laughing at exploration. Is it not possible that seeing a planet hit by two disasters in a row made Archivili bitter about their freedom to leave such places at will? You can probably tell where I'm going with this, but let's talk about Cosmodicy first. After completing the event, you're told which navigator you're most similar to with nine possible outcomes from across the Nameless's history, including Archivili's fall. From IC's profile, we know Archivili's fall and Nanook's birth were successive events, and his successor, Falcon Edmondson, experienced the early days of the Cancer of All Worlds, i.e. the Stellarons, and helped repair the Star Rail. Incidentally, Archivili's fall coincided with the end of the Second Prosperity, but it's possible they're connected since the Star Rail enabled easy travel and transportation, but I have no definitive proof. Now some smaller things of note. When trying to force a meeting with Nanook during the swarm disaster, the Trailblazer, acting as Akavili, declares trailblazing in the name of destruction is a valid approach to the path. And while we know Akavili fell, we don't know if they died. Himiko refutes the idea, and even Kafka says early news knows the truth for sure. Going back to that image of the Trailblaze from the architect story, if those bandages were to unravel, wouldn't they look an awful lot like Nanook's arms and bindings? Also, though I know it's just sand in the desert therein, doesn't it also look a bit like falling golden blood from their hands? There we go. I think it's possible that Akavili is Nanook in some form. Perhaps seeing the state of Adlevan made them so shocked or angry that even they wound up straying too far from their path, and maybe it made their body or power scatter. Part of it was reborn as Nanook, while the rest was scattered as Stellarons, and that's why Stellarons interrupt Star Rail. They come from the same power source, so repel each other like magnets of the same polarity. It would also explain the Trailblazer situation. Scripted to join the Nameless, yet destined to fight Nanook one day, and being a destruction unit by default. If this really is 
Star Elf's big secret, it explained why Foodie's dialogue was changed to just be about those two eons as well. Now, some bonus circumstantial evidence. If you try to meet the Aoshi in Swarm Disaster, you get the following exchange where Skrulam hypothesizes a connection between them and Tazeroth. Herta discusses the similarity between their paths in her first entry on Anuk 2. The pair seem to be discussing how Tazeroth died. Clearpath's second Swarm Disaster entry described them beating concepts out of them. If Skrulam is right that the propagation's will to survive became the abundance, could a more destructive aspect of it not latched onto one of the eons present and inflicted them in some way too? Second, what happens when you meet Nanook in the simulation for the first time? They immediately kill you. While you could attribute this to Nanook being a murder hobo, even Herta, someone who researches Aeons, is surprised by this. She says Nanook never met Akivili, but if Nanook is Akivili or an offshoot of them, they'd know right away we were a fake. If not, and the two are connected in some way, then perhaps Nanook bore a secret grudge? While these versions of the Aeons are AI, they're connected to their respective paths in reality, so their behaviour is indicative of their real deals, i.e. the real Nanook would likely do the same. That's the main theory done, but I wanted to note two other theories, one created from scratch by Cosmodicy and the other strengthened by it, also related to the Navigators. First, I didn't mention the Navigator in charge of the Express when Akivili disappeared. This was Dolly, someone who liked novel and nostalgic experiences alike and, as I'm sure you'll agree, was very pink. She was a talented enough singer that even Akivili stopped by to listen and talk to her and she was so shaken by their fall that she sung for three days straight and turned to a crystal beneath the stars. Considering Marge was also found in a unique type of ice in space, is this her? If so, it'd be poetic for her to be searching for her home all this time only to be on it all along. The second navigator is IC, who I mentioned before. Take the following with a grain of salt as this entry was tampered with by the history fictionologists, but it's said that the Expresses shrank to just two members during his tenure due to Archivelli's fall and his departure coincided with the beginning of the Omen Vanguard faction. The Vanguards followed Terminus and derived prophecies from their words, and Elio is widely theorised to be a finality emanator due to his scripts. Elio could be IC's descendant or even the man himself. Let's go back to Fully's words in the simulated universe. The origin of the theory that Elio and the Nameless are connected was the phrase, be careful Elio, the train moves forward. If we assume Elio is IC, then an earlier line also makes more sense. Your dereliction of duty will pass may refer to IC stepping down as navigator in the Express's time of need, being forgotten after his successes brought things back on track, no pun intended, while the train moves forward and the cancer is growing could mean he's running out of time to prepare the Nameless for Nanook. Perhaps this was an encounter that happened in reality too, since thanks to Herta we now fully visited at least one other human of interest. Trust, the founder of the IPC. And now the two bonus theories are done as well. Thanks for watching all of this, I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? Thanks again to Ven Passa for doing all the heavy lifting for this as well. Thanks again, and as always, have a great day.